Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this What is Wednesday, I'm going to be covering Webpack. So I'm going to be talking about what is Webpack, why might you use it, why it's a little confusing sometimes to understand what it is or how you'd use it, or maybe even some of the uh, syntax or some of the code involved. So we're going to be talking all about Webpack and what it can do for you. Okay, so in this What is Wednesday, I'm gonna be talking about Webpack. What is Webpack? And this one is a good one for this type of video because honestly, what is Webpack? Bundle your styles, bundle your assets, modules and dependencies, static assets, all okay. Uh, up front here, yeah, this makes sense. Uh, we have a little bit of an image giving us a hint to sort of what this does. Uh, it takes a bunch of files that are connected in some way. We have SAS files and JavaScript and images. It runs them through this cube, which you're assuming is Webpack, and spits them out as with just standard JavaScript, CSS, Ping, and JPEG. You know, stuff the browser uh, recognizes. And so this might seem like kind of interesting, right? We're, we're taking all this stuff, we're running it through something, and we're getting this stuff out. And to me, that screams build process and uh, you know when webpack came out and people were talking about it there was such a, a rush to call it like a module loader and all sorts of stuff but not a build process because it's it's different than a build process well in my 100 percent understanding of webpack it's a build process if you come from grunt or gulp it's essentially doing the same kind of things it's taking your files it's running them through some sort of conversion and it's spitting them out into something the browser can understand if you've used gulp or grunt you remember that you uh, could add in something like a sas package to pipe into your gulp and it spits out css and webpack is very very similar to that it's going to do that in fact there isn't really an instance in which you would want to use gulp with webpack or grunt with webpack unless you had a gulp build process already in place that you didn't want to leave so the reality of it is is it takes the place of something like that now I should mention when I'm talking about some of these features within this video, I'm not meaning to say in any sort of way that Gulp or Grunt can't do some of these things. Uh, in fact, this is just going to be about what Webpack can do specifically. So if you scroll down, you'll see we get a little bit more information, right? You write your code, well, we have app.js, we have bar.js, and we have a Webpack config file, and we have an HTML page. And well, what happens here? Well, we run this webpack config, we, we run webpack essentially, and it's going to use our JavaScript files and it's going to be able to import and export and do all that great stuff to keep your JavaScript modular. If you've worked in any sort of modern JavaScript environment for application development, it's extremely common. And definitely if you've worked in, you know, create react app like we do in the react 16 for everyone course, small plug there uh, head over to leveluptutorials.com you can become a pro or purchase a series sorry about that small plug had to do it uh, but what this is here is we're splitting up our JavaScript into many different files. And because of that, we can import them and we can export them and we can organize our code in a way where, well, things are no longer global. If you had a giant JavaScript file or several giant JavaScript files, then you'll run into things like namespace collision where you have two variables that are named something. And when you're working with modules, you'll never have to worry about that because if I import poster from movie, then this is what poster is, right? But if I defined poster in another file somewhere else, it's not gonna have any effect on this file in particular because I'm importing it uh, directly from here. It makes things very explicit. And if you're working in any sort of, uh, any sort of JavaScript web application, right? Angular, React, Vue, any of this stuff, this modularity becomes so extremely important, you don't want a bunch of global stuff sitting around your files because that's just going to lead to a complete disaster very quickly. So what Webpack does is it allows you to use this sort of importing and modularity and modular system. And, and that's not really just it because 
it allows you to plug in different things, right? So in addition to handling our JavaScript modules, it also handles, well, conversion from ES next to current version of JavaScript that works in the browser using Babel. And so by using things like Webpack with something like Babel, with something like SAS, with something like Auto Prefixer, basically it allows you to write this code in a way that makes everything nice and organized module, all that good stuff, and it builds your code into something that the browser can read. Again, coming back to this thing, if you think about it, Webpack is really just a build process, and it's an advanced build process at that. And there's a lot of advanced features there, like things like dead code elimination, right? It can find code that you're not actually using, or maybe it can bundle up smaller modules of JavaScript so you're not serving your entire application to every single user that just visits your homepage, right? And so Webpack is, is great for these super advanced features because, well, it has so much flexibility and configuration. Now the problem is, is when we get into config files, they can look like a total, well, I don't know. In my opinion, it's difficult to parse. This in fact is the config file that comes with the Create React app after you eject from Create React app. Now that said, this config file is definitely a bit more crazy than some others. But as you can see here, the syntax is by no means as concise and nice as something like Gulp where you're just writing a function and you can keep track of everything. And in my opinion, it's filled with a bunch of jargony terms like a loader and module and rules and and all sorts of stuff that, well, it doesn't lend itself to being super easy to pick up. I mean, for instance, look at this config file that is output as the dev config file for create react app. This thing is so intense that they have to have multiple line paragraphs of comments sort of explaining what each of these things does. I mean, look at this, there's three lines here. And so in my opinion, the best way to work with something like Webpack isn't to always write your own config files from scratch, but to look for config files that do what you want them to do and borrow them. Or if you have the ability to just work in a system that, uh, that obfuscates the Webpack config itself, like something like next.js or Gatsby, both are using Webpack as their build process, but you don't have to visit those files if you don't want to because they're already taken care of for you. And in fact, one of the reasons why I like Meteor so much is because you don't really ever have to touch a build process config file despite it not using Webpack itself. So, so and that's not to say that Webpack's syntax is unreadable or anything like that. If you take the time, you can learn all of the ins and outs of Webpack pretty, pretty significantly. That said, yeah, look at this, yikes. Um, so if you want to learn Webpack, I mean, their, their docs are great. So if you head to webpack.js.org, you head to their getting started, they do a basic setup where, yeah, we create a basic JavaScript file, we create a basic HTML file, and then we learn about adding bundles and adding packages and stuff like that. And you start to write your own Webpack configuration. See how this first Webpack config.js file, this right here, is way, 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 way infinitely nicer to read than the one that's going on here. That said, this is doing a lot more. So what you have here is you have, yep, you're bringing in path, which is a node package, and we are exporting, well, the entry to our app, which is at index.js, and we're going to output bundle.js, and we're not really doing anything else. At that point, well, it's just going to work for us. All we're doing in this JavaScript file is simply importing Lodash, I believe. Let's scroll up top here. Yeah, all we're doing is really importing Lodash into this file, and that's it. So what Webpack is going to do is it's going to use that NPM package, Lodash, and it's going to import it and allow us to use this import-export syntax. 
So at the end of the day, is Webpack worth it? Absolutely, Webpack is worth it. It's the best build system around, even if you don't wanna call it a build tool or build system. It, it does all of this stuff very excellently, but it handles modern JS applications in a way that you couldn't necessarily do before with all of the modern bells and whistles. That said, given the opportunity, if I had to choose between not writing a Webpack config and writing a Webpack config, I would always choose not writing a Webpack config. So using something like Next or Gatsby or whatever, and maybe you wanna just borrow some Webpack configs. Well, maybe you'll just want to head over to Google and start Googling like, React application webpack config and start copying and pasting instead of necessarily starting from scratch. Although it is a, a great thing to sort of learn this, there is a lot here. And most of it is worth your time. For instance, lazy loading and code splitting and tree shaking and hot module replacement and all that great stuff is something that is going to make your application better and your development experience better. So uh, like I said, you will want to spend the time to learn Webpack and, and, and get this going if you plan on writing your own script. If you're happy with systems like Next or Gatsby, that will save you the headache of having to write this stuff yourself, or you can always just head to Google and grab some config that adds the stuff that you want to use. Maybe that SAS or auto prefixer or whatever. So at the end of the day, Webpack is something that simply just collects your JavaScript modules. And when I say module, I mean a file that's imported somewhere and exported somewhere else, right? It's a contained file, a contained module. Um, again, these like syntactical things sort of get in the way sometimes. You see it's a module bunder, not a build system. Like, okay, I get it. But what it's doing is it's collecting your files, it's converting them into something the browser can understand, and it's spitting them out into actual files. So I hope that made sense and I hope you have a better understanding about what the heck Webpack is and maybe have it not be so confusing in the future because it's definitely one of those things that's easy to look at and just go, okay, <laughs> and just not know what to do next. So this is the second iteration of what is Wednesday. Uh, as someone mentioned before, YouTubers keeping schedules are difficult and I totally understand. I fully intend on continuing this week after week after week. So let me know what things you want to hear about. I already got a ton of amazing suggestions from the first video and I'm hopefully going to keep plowing through these until we have covered everything there's possibly is to know about what the heck is this thing and and uh, how we can learn it in a more basic way because a lot of the stuff, web dev stuff, can be often filled with tons and tons of jargon. Okay, so uh, if you found this to be excellent and you would like to see more level up tutorials, the React 16 for Everyone course was just released and covers get this a webpack less configuration because it's using Create React app. Now, that said, you can eject from Create React app and have access to these lovely webpack config files if you'd like, but they're there nonetheless, right? So if you like this, you head over to leveluptutorials.com forward slash store. It's the React 16 for everyone. Or you can become a level up pro and get a new premium tutorial series every new month. For instance, this one that just came out for October was React 16 for everyone. November's premium tutorial series is going to be modern CSS layouts, where I cover not only CSS grid and Flexbox, but all these modern CSS properties that work together to help you build excellent, excellent modern layouts. It's gonna be an excellent course and I'm really super excited about it. So head on over to leveluptutorials.com forward slash pro and subscribe today. That would make me super duper happy and help uh, fund and fuel videos like this one itself. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one, bye.